Hi, and welcome to Mr. Wilson Teaches Alginate Mold Making. Today we're going to bring you through the process of how to make an alginate mold. This is a special process that picks up a lot of detail. Here's an example of a finished product. So today we're going to do Griffin's hand. This is Griffin, he's one of my seventh graders. And we're going to bring you through all the steps that you need to go from the alginate to the plaster mold and then carving it out. Alright, so the supplies you're going to need are pretty simple. Um, the first one is an alginate mold. So this is a fairly cheap one, this is called Mold Gel. Um, this you can buy online at uh, dickwick.com. There's a couple other websites that sell it. Um, this one is a fast set, so they have different speeds depending on the temperature of water you use. The hotter the water, the quicker it goes. So you'll need the mold gel, and we also need water, which we have ready. I've got mine at a medium um, temperature so that it goes fast, but not too fast so that I don't end up messing it up. I also use an immersion blender. Um, this is typically used for food, but you can also use it to mix. Um, you can do it by hand, it doesn't make a difference. This just speeds up the process a little. All right, so we're going to start mixing up the mold gel or the alginate. Um, it's fairly simple. There are specific ratios you can use, but usually I just eyeball it and sort of feel for what's right. Um, I have an old Hawaiian punch jug that I'm using as the container. You can use any type of container that will hold everything out. You can even build clay walls as long as there's no place for the liquid to escape. So I'm starting with the medium water. I always go water first and then add in the gel. Um, typically the gel will make this probably about 50-50 so the water will rise up here and you want to leave space for when Griffin puts his hand in so it doesn't all come out. And then just slowly sprinkle it in. And try not to breathe this stuff in. Remember it reacts with water. So if you were to eat some of this or get it in your nose it would then harden, which would not be good for you. And then we're going to start the blending process. So this will like, heat up to look at the end in it. And then it'll start to harden around and it's gonna feel really weird. Now that the alginate is mixed up, it's going to start setting. So it goes through a process where it climbs the chemical reaction where it starts to harden, and then it'll be safe to pull your hand out. This stuff flexes. This is a little different than plaster. That's why I use it for these fine molds where you want a lot of detail. So Griffin's going to keep his hand in. Um, typically, the more closed off you are, for example, this or this, it's easier. We're going to try for a harder mold where he's going to leave a gap, and we're going to see if we can pull off that with the plaster as well. So Griffin's going to insert his hand. He's going to hold it as steady as he can, touching the bottom. Mm -hmm. And while he's doing that, you might be able to notice from the camera, we're still missing a little part of his wrist. So I'm going to mix up some more alginate to put in there while he's doing that. All right, when you're mold making, it's also very important that there's no air bubbles. So after the mold is poured and you've got your hand, you're going to want to tap the sides. It's going to start to release some of the air. I also hit around the table. And you should be able to see bubbles starting to rise out of the bottom up to the surface and on the surface you can take your hand and just pop some of the bubbles. Um, so I'm going to grab the camera I'm going to bring it a little closer so you can see the mold from a different angle. Alright so this is a closer look of what it looks like in the mold so you can see some of these air bubbles in here that start to rise up to the surface and now this should start hardening and then we're going to pull his hand out slowly. Um, it's also important too to mention that he lotioned up his hand made sure they were clean before we went in uh, so it's easier to release. 
All right, so the mold is now hardened, which means we can pull Griffin's hand out. Um, because he's in this position, we're gonna make sure that he splits his hand open and slides it up slowly. When he comes out, the mold's going to flex, and then it's gonna snap back to the original form, and then we'll pour the plaster in. So I'm gonna hold it down while he pushes out. And then it holds its shape right inside there, and we'll do a close-up of this too. And I'll show you what it looks like before we pour the plaster in. All right, it's a little hard to see with the lighting, but you can see inside there it picked up all the different grooves. You can see it even picked up some of the prints from his hand. So we're going to pour plaster right into here. It takes about a day for that plaster to set up, and then after that we're going to carve it out. Um, so I'll show you that in the next part of the video. All right, the next phase is adding the plaster into the mold. So first we have to make the plaster. Plaster is typically 50% water, 50% plaster. Always start with the water first. Um, try not to create a lot of bubbles, so you never want to take your bucket, swish it around. Um, typically, I use my hands, and I'll take my hand and just go on the bottom and start to mix it so like that, trying to create not a lot of air bubbles. Um, so using something like the immersion blender on this isn't always a good idea because you're going to create a lot of bubbles. So we're going to use our hand for it. Um, we're going to start with the water, so we'll bring the camera closer so you can see each of the parts. Um, hotter the water, the faster this goes. So I've got medium temperature water, and it shouldn't take a lot. So I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. And then when you use the plaster, you're gonna slowly filter it in. So I'm letting it hit the water and start to blend itself. So this is making it so I don't have to mix as much. And once it starts to island, which means it starts to be able to be seen from the surface, that's when you know you're gonna be ready to start adding a little bit more and then start mixing. So you can see that little island there starting to get dissolved. So I'm gonna do a little bit more and I typically would so that this goes a little faster. So the more plaster you put in, the faster it goes. So normally you'd want to measure it all out, um, but this is also a method you could do. Like I said, you're gonna take your hand, start to slowly mix it around. You can also take it through your hand and smush it like that, just make sure you're getting all of it. Um, so I can already tell because I've done this enough that I'm not getting enough plaster in there, so I'm gonna add a lot more in. Um, but if it's your first time, just keep mixing and once it starts to harden, you'll know. And this is also really bad to breathe in. You don't want this in your lungs, because just like with alginate, it reacts to the moisture and it hardens. You don't ever want to get this near your eyes, nose, or mouth. And you can tell when it's done when it starts to create a wake like behind the boat. So if you take your finger like this and go over, if it creates a line and stays there, that means you're ready. So I'm almost there. You saw that it started to make a little bit of a line. I'm going to add a little bit more plaster, mix it up, and then I'm going to pour it in. So depending on what type of mold you're making, so if you watch the video where I make a sprig ceramic mold, that one I use way more plaster because I want it to harden faster. This stuff, since it's gonna sit for a day, it can be a little more watery, and it's better when you're doing a mold like this for it to be more watery because then it's going to seep into every single area, and it's okay if it takes longer for the chemical reaction to happen. And you can tell the chemical reaction's happening, it'll heat up um, way past room temperature and then cool back down. That's when you know it's ready. All right, so again, look for the wakes. So you can see the bubbles traveling on that line. You never want this to clump up, so you saw I just spread it over the surface of all of it. All right, so we want to get all the air bubbles out. So again, we have to hit the sides of it. You can see those air bubbles come to the surface. Tap it a couple times, try to get more. And we're going to be ready to pour. So we want this as close to the opening as we can get so we can seep into all of it. And hopefully I made enough. If not, we can make some up really quick. Alright, so I'm going to stop there so you can see inside of it. So it's starting to fill into those cavities. Give it a little shake so that you get all the air bubbles out. Alright, so you can see a lot of air bubbles coming up. That's because we did that counterpart where it looked like that. So we're getting it into those fingers. just about the perfect amount. So you want it to float over the edge a little bit like this. That way you can cut it away later. Again, get all the air bubbles out. You can see some of these bigger air bubbles coming to the surface. And then you wait. So one day, usually 24 hours does it, and then we'll start to cut it away in the next part of the video. Hi, and welcome to day two of making alginate mold 
Um, now that this is set overnight, the plaster is now hard, so we're going to be cutting it out um, slowly using our razor. So I'm going to take a close-up of this and show you exactly how to cut. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is cut open our mold. So I'm taking the razor and getting rid of this whole container. Um, lots of water will probably be in there from the alginate as well as the plaster. So just be prepared for that to come out eventually. And we're cutting it out instead of flipping it over because we don't want any of the mold to get ruined. So as long as you can split it open, we'll be good. All right, now that we've got it out of the container, we're going to start cutting weight the mold. It's really important that you take your time and do this slow. So typically I'll take a chunk and start to pull it away. So you can tell that this was mixed up really good because there's no air bubbles in there. So using that immersion blender worked really nicely. And as soon as we start to hit the hand, that's when we want to slow it down and switch over to our smaller blade. So I'm just cutting until I start to see some of the pieces. Right, so you can see the hand there, so that's where we're going to start tearing away. Start to uncover the hand. And you can see the actual mold itself, so that was the original hand. That's the part that the plaster stuck to there. So that's the area we're trying to find. Uh, remember when we did this mold, there was a connecting area because the hand was like this. So the alginate is going through the hole, so we have to be careful. And when we get to there, if we pull too hard, it can crack the mold. So you have to go real slow once you start to get towards the hand. And there is a little bit of an edge here too on the base. So this edge will show up and we'll break that off later. So I'm just gonna bring this alginate all the way down to the base, just so you can see it. So there's the base, which we're gonna chip off. You can start to see some of the moisture come off of there too. So there's the tip of the hand there. And there are some little air bubbles here and there from when the hand went in. So we will get rid of those later too in the finishing touches. And there's the area where it goes through. So that's the area you gotta be most careful of. As right, so you can see in this, that's the part we're worried about. It can potentially break the mold. So I'm gonna switch to a smaller blade start to take it away a little slower. I'm being careful not to actually hit the plaster and just scoop it out little by little. And then once it's small enough, you can usually just slide it through. You can see we now have the shape. It picks up every single part of the hand texture. So I'm going to clean this up a little and then we'll do another close-up. So here we have the final project. I didn't cut off the base. I'm going to see exactly if the girlfriend wants to cut or not. Um, but this is what the final piece comes out. So you can see it's picking up every single detail in the hand as well as the fingernails. So this is what they're using in the movie industry right now to create um, unique designs and create mask work and different designs for creature concepts. So this is what they're using. Instead of using plaster, like I said yesterday, you can use polyfoam, you can use plaster, um, you can use plastic, all sorts of different casting materials. So it's up to you what you want to use, but this is what your final project is going to look like, and this is something you can easily find in stores like Walmart or online at dickwick.com.